Welcome back guys, it's Marlene Echeverry again from the Natural and Social Science Lab at Miami-Dade Kendall Campus. Today, we're gonna to be looking at what is known as balancing reactions. Whenever you're given a chemical reaction in chemistry, one of the first things you have to ask yourself is, is it a balanced reaction? Um, the concept of balancing reaction is really tied in with what's known as conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is a, is a law in nature that basically says that energy can't be neither created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed. So the idea is when you're given a chemical reaction, like let's use an example of four phosphoruses <coughs> plus two hydrogens with a subscript of two, producing a compound like PH3, the first thing you have to do is you have to analyze this chemical reaction and you have to ask yourself, is it balanced? Well here, I'm demonstrating to have four phosphorus on the left side of the reaction, but on the right side of the reaction, I see that there's an invisible subscript of only one. So then I realize there's an imbalance in my chemical reaction. So how do I actually go about balancing this? Well, one of the approaches that you can take is you can list the elements underneath the reaction arrow, and then you can proceed and try to balance it. So what I would do is I would ask myself, how many phosphorus do I have on both sides? And then last, I would ask myself, how many hydrogens do I have on both sides? So, for example, here I have four phosphorus, so I'll make sure to take note that initially I have four phosphorus. On the right side, I only have one, so I'll go ahead and put a one here. How many hydrogens do I have on the left side? I have two hydrogens, so I'll make sure to make a note of that. And then on the right side, I actually have three hydrogens, so I'll make a note of that. So initially, you just want to take stock of everything you have in your initial reaction, and now is when you go ahead and start adding what are known as coefficients. Coefficients are numbers that go in front of your compound or element. And what you're going to end up doing is you're going to multiply your coefficient times your subscript to try to balance your reaction. So let's go ahead and try to balance ours. We have four phosphorus on the left, but we only have one on the right. So <coughs> what number am I going to have to plug in here that when I multiply that times one will give me a total of four? Uh, quite clearly, it would be four. So now four times one gives you a total of four phosphorus, and you can see that this is balanced. You have four on the left, and now you have four on the right. But one of the most important principles is that as soon as you add a coefficient to a compound, it not only applies to the element of interest, it also applies to the other element. So I'm gonna multiply this four also times the three of the hydrogen. So this is actually four times three for a total of 12 hydrogens on the right side. And now I can see that I'm imbalanced as far as my hydrogens. I have two on the left and I have 12 on the right. So what am I gonna do to balance this situation? Well, <clears throat> I come over here to the hydrogen. I see the coefficient blank and then a subscript of two. So the real question is what number times two will give me a total of 12? Well, quite simply it would have to be coefficient of six. So your six times the two gives you a total of 12 hydrogens. The nice thing about this system is that you can be sure that you're perfectly balanced because you can see that you have 12 on the left and you have 12 on the right. So there's no confusion. The last thing you should do if they ask you for the sum of the coefficients, if you have to make sure that you put a one on an empty blank coefficient space here. So this would be what is known as a balanced reaction here. We have four phosphorus, six hydrogen, six moles of hydrogen reacting to produce four moles of pH3. That would be a balanced reaction.